8. Welcome to our inventories practice questions. So, ang coverage ng practice questions na ito ay ang inventory overview natin, ang inventory um, FOB destinations at FOB shipping point na topics, at saka ang consignment. So, ganito ang magiging mechanics ng ating practice practice questions. Alright? So, if a flash ko yung question sa yung screen, kagaya nito, then ipopause mo po yung screen mo, then solve the problem. So, kapag meron ka ng answers and solutions in front of you, then ipreplay mo ulit for the next question. Sa so solutions naman, ganito po ang gagawin natin. So, ang FOB shipping point, the buyer owns the goods. Since the buyer owns the goods, the buyer should be responsible for them. So, sa solutions, lahat po ng concept ay isusulat ko dito. Then, gagamitin natin yung mga concepts for analysis of each question. Then, dito naman natin isusulat ang solution sa bawat problem. Kung ready ka na, halika, samahan mo ako. Mag-analyze ng inventories. All right, question number one. The requirement on question number one is, by what amount should Omar inventory account at December 31st be reduced? So, ang tinatanong ng problem kung magkano daw ang i-adjust natin sa inventory ni Omar. So, the following items were included in Omar's company inventory account at December 31st. Take note, the word included all right so there are three items sa problem na ito then we will analyze kung kailangan ba natin include ito sa ating inventory or hindi kung hindi natin dapat include yan ang hinahanap ng problem all right first item is merchandise out on consignment at sales price including 40 percent markup on selling price so kailangan ba natin include pati ang ating markup or ating gross profit. Ang dapat lang natin pinapakita sa inventory, ang laman ng inventory natin ay yung cost lang. Yung puhunan mo lang sa mga goods na binibenta mo. Yun ang laman ng ating inventory account. Alright? So, kung isinama yung markup, tubo mo sa goods na yun, dapat inaalis natin yon. Sinabi ng problem natin is including 40% markup on selling price. So, remember, our selling price minus our cost of the goods is equal to our gross profit. So, kung 40% po ito, therefore, our selling price is 100%. So, kung 100% minus the cost percentage is equal to our gross profit, ang ating percentage ng cost natin is 60%. Alright? Pero hindi yan ang hinahanap ng problem. Ang hinahanap ng problem kung magkano yung i-reduce natin, yung isinama sa inventory natin na hindi naman dapat isama. Yung 40%, yung profit, or yung markup ng goods na kinonsign natin. So, the item number one should be reduced by the markup. So, magkano ang markup na in-include nila doon sa 40,000? So, 40,000 times the 40%. Alright, alisin natin ang 
16,000. Another item is goods purchased in transit ship FOB shipping point. Let's have an overview of our FOB shipping point and FOB destination. On the locations of the seller, that's our shipping point. And on the locations of the buyer, that's our destination. The lowang ways lang ang pwedeng maging agreement between the seller and the buyer. All right. FOB destination or FOB shipping point. FOB shipping point. Sa FOB shipping point, pagbigay niya kay carrier as the carrier is on the way to the buyer, pag-aari na ni buyer yung goods kapag FOB shipping point. Kapag FOB destination naman, Kapag FOB destination naman, ang ibig sabihin, the ownership of the good transfers to the buyer kapag si carrier nakarating na kay, kay buyer. So, habang si carrier nasa daan papunta kay buyer, pag-aari pa rin ni seller. So, itong goods na pinurchase ni Omar in transit and ship FOB shipping point Pagaari ni Omar yon because Omar is the buyer. So this thirty six thousands, wala tayong adjustment jan. Talagang kailangan naka include yan sa inventory ni Omar. Another item is goods held on consignment by Omar. Sa consignment naman, the consignor transfer goods to the consignee. The consignor owns the good, therefore the goods should be included in the consignor's inventory. The responsibility of the consignee ay ibenta itong goods na ito. All right. The responsibility of the consignee is to sell the goods. Therefore, si consignee hindi niya pag-aari yung goods na yon. Kailangan excluded yan sa inventory niya. So, ang sabi ng problem natin is goods held on consignment by Omar. Si Omar, consignee siya. Therefore, hindi natin yan dapat i-include sa inventory ni Omar. So, aalisin natin yan. All right. Amounting to 27,000. So the total na aalisin natin sa inventario ni Omar is 43,000. And this is our answer. So ang answer natin is letter D. Alright, question number two. What amount of net inventory on consignment remains on the statement of positions for the first year for Omar? So, ang tinatanong ng problem kung magkano pa daw ang inventory na naiiwan sa kinonsigned on the statement of positions for the first year for Omar. Sikat si Omar ngayon. Omar Company ship inventory on consignment to Seabright Company. Si Omar ang ating consignor. Si Seabright naman ang ating consignee. So, Omar Company ship inventory on consignment to Seabright Company that cost 20000 Yung So, yung transfer niyang goods, nagkakahalaga ito ng 20000 Alright? Ang tanong ng problem kung magkano pa daw ang naiiwan sa kinonsign niyang goods kay Seabright. Seabright paid 500 advertising that was reimbursable from Omar. So, dito sa consignment na ito, lahat po ng mai-incur na cost ni consignee with regards to selling the goods ni consignor, lahat po yon ay dapat expenses ni consignor. Like, for example, the commission, the advertisement, also yung marketing with regards to selling the goods. Alright? So, lahat po ng mai-incur na gastos ni consignee with regards to selling the goods ay dapat expenses ni consignor o ni Omar. Lahat naman ng mga cost na may incur ni Omar or ng consignor it should be capitalized to the good consign. So yung kinonsigned ni Omar kay Seabright ay 20,000. Alright? Seabright paid 500 advertising that was reimbursable from Omar. So meaning to say that's the expenses. Yan ay hindi tanong ng problem. 
all right? At the end of the year, 70% of the inventory was sold for 30,000. So ang ibig sabihin, 70% ang nabent ni Seabright, meron pang naiiwan na 30%. So ang tinatanong ng problem is kung magkano pa daw ang naiiwan sa kinonsign niyang goods. Right? The agreement states that commission of 20% will be provided to Seabright for all sales. That's a commission, that's an expense by the consignor. Hindi yan kasama sa tinatanong na ending inventory. Ang ending inventory, therefore, ni Omar, with regards to this consigned goods, is 30% of the 20,000. So our answer is 20,000. So, ang answer po natin ay 6,000. Yan lang ang naiiwan sa kinunsan niyang goods. And our answer is letter B. Alright, question number 3. What is the requirement of question number 3? What is the correct amount of merchandise inventory? So, makano daw ang correct amount ng inventory ni Eclipse Company? Eclipse Company reported merchandise of 4 million and the following items are included in the amount. Merchandise in bodega. So, ito yung merchandise in bodega. Ito yung po yung mga merchandise on and ni Eclipse Company. So, kung walang additional information na itong mga merchandise na ito or some of this merchandise hindi pag-aari ni Eclipse, we assume that this merchandise on hand ay pag-aari ni Eclipse Company. Item number two, merchandise on consignment to Sunshine Company. So, ang ibig sabihin si Eclipse Company, siya ang consignor. Kinonsign niya or transfer niya ang good kay, kay Sunshine Company. So, si Sunshine Company siya ang consignee natin. Dahil consignor si Clips Company, kasama yan dapat sa ating inventory. So, item number two should be included in our merchandise inventory. Alright, item number three. Merchandise in transit. Purchased by Eclipse FOB Shipping Point. FOB destinations ang ibig sabihin, yung ownership o yung title ng good, magta transfer lang ang ownership kapag nakarating si carrier sa destination. Therefore, habang si carrier papunta pa lang siya sa buyer or sa destinations, pag-aari ito ni seller. So, on FOB destination, the seller owns the good. FOB shipping point naman, upon shipment of the seller, the title of the goods or the ownership of the goods transfers to the buyer. So, dito pa lang, pag-aari na ni buyer. Alright? So, habang daladala ni carrier ito papunta sa kanya, pag-aari na ni buyer yon. That is FOB shipping point. Buyer owns the good. Alright, item number three says, merchandise in transit Purchase by Eclipse. So, si Eclipse, buyer siya. Kasi, purchase ito. FOB shipping point. So, kapag FOB shipping point, pag-aari ng buyer, therefore, pag-aari ni Eclipse, itong 620,000. Dahil pag-aari niya, isasama natin yan sa ating merchandise inventory. Last item, item number four, merchandise in transit sold by Eclipse, FOB destination. So, sold by Eclipse, ang ibig sabihin si Eclipse, seller siya. And the agreement is FOB destination. So, sa FOB destination, pag-aari ni seller. At si Eclipse, seller siya. Therefore, Eclipse owns the goods. Alright, in transit. So, ang item number four ay pag-aari ni Eclipse. Therefore, we are going to include this in our merchandise inventory. Amounting to 730,000. So, ang total ng ating merchandise inventory ay parehas lang sa 4 million. So, lahat po ng items ay kasali. So, our answer is letter A. Alright, question number four. What is the total cost of purchase? So, magkano daw ang total cost ng ating purchase? So, dito sa problem na ito, 
kailangan natin ma-determine kung ano ang dapat natin i-include sa puhunan natin sa mga goods na pinurchase natin at kung ano yung mga hindi dapat natin i-include. Now, let me give you a concept on this problem. When the problem gives you a least price and a trade discount, ibabawas mo po yan. Yung least price, ito po yung price na, na ino-offer sa mga customer o sa mga wholesalers. Then, so with this least price, ino offer din sila ng trade discount. Ano ba ang purpose ng trade discount? Ang purpose ng trade discount ay para ma-encourage itong mga wholesalers na bumili ng mas marami. Kaya sila ino offer ng trade discount. So, when the problem gives you a least price and a trade discount, minaminus po natin yan to get our invoice price. Itong amount ng invoice price, yan po talaga ang cost ng ating purchases. So, this amount of the invoice price is the price or the amounts we debit on our purchases. So, we debit our purchases and we credit our accounts payable kung magkano ito. Kung cash naman binayaran ng company, then we credit the cash. We debit the purchases and we credit the cash. Itong list price, hindi natin nire-record ito sa ating books. As well as our trade discount. Ang nire-record lang natin is yung invoice price. Now, aside from the invoice price, which is the cost of our purchases, yung mga cost na may incur o magagastos ng company to bring these goods into the company's warehouse, lahat po yun ay ikakapitalize sa cost ng goods. For example, free delivery charge ng carrier, mga handling cost, insurance na binili mo para kapag may nangyari sa goods in transit, meron kang makiklaim sa insurance. Meron pang pali. Mga taxes para ma-import itong goods na ito, yun ay kasama pa rin sa at cost of the goods. We capitalize those costs incurred para makarating ito sa warehouse ng company. Kapag nasa warehouse naman na ang goods na yun, nasa kamay na ng company ang mga goods na yun, any cost incurred ay expense na po yun. And anything na cost na may incur ng company for selling this good ay magiging expense din ng company. So, international company has incurred the following cost during the year. Cost of purchase or the least price is 7 million. Remember, hindi pa yan ang ating cost ng ating purchases. So, ilalagay natin dito least price. Amounting to 7 million. Then we will minus our trade discount, which is 20% and 30% on purchases. Pero binigay na yung amount natin. So, 3920000 po ang ating invoice price. Yan ang cost ng goods na pinarchase natin. But aside from that, meron pa tayong ikakapitalize ng mga costs na may incur natin in bringing these goods to the company's warehouse. Alright? Freight in, kakapitalize po natin yan. So, we will add freight in. Amounting to 25000 Another item is insurance on purchases. So, yung insurance, para kapag may nangyari, meron kang makiklaim. I-add din po natin yan sa ating purchases. Amounting to 32000 Another item is import duties. Ito yung mga taxes na binayaran ng company with regards to importing these goods from other country. Ika-capitalize pa rin natin sa ating cost ng purchase natin. Amounting to 80,000. Storage cost. Dahil storage cost, ang ibig sabihin, yung goods nakarating na sa company. Kapag nakarating na sa company, lahat po ng ma-incur niyang cost ay magiging expense. At lahat po ng mga 
cost na mai-incur niya o magagastos niya with regards to selling these goods ay expense din po yan. So, itong storage cost ay expense. Hindi siya kasali sa ating cost of our purchase. Handling costs relating to imports and brokerage commission na 100,000. Yan po, kasali po. Ka capitalize pa rin yan sa ating cost of purchase. So, we have a total of our cost of purchase of 4,157,000. So, our answer is letter D. Alright, question number 5. The requirement on question number 5 is what amount should be included in inventory on December 31st, year 2? So, ang hinahanap is kung ano magkano daw yung i-include natin sa inventory natin on December 31st, year 2. And there are four items on this question. Alright, but before we get into analyzing these problems, let me give you an overview of what is the shipping point and destination again. So, on the seller is the shipping point and on the locations of the buyer is the destination. Kapag ang agreement between the seller and the buyer ay FOB destinations, the ownership of the goods transfers to the buyer kapag nakarating na kay buyer. Alright? Kasi FOB destination. So, habang kinitina transport ni carrier ang goods papunta kay buyer, ang goods in transit na ito ay pag-aari ni seller. The seller owns the goods. Since the seller owns the goods, the seller should be responsible for the freight. On the books of the seller, it should be charged as freight out. Alright? Itong freight out na account na ito, this is classified as a selling expense. So, kapag si seller ang nagbayad ng free charge ni carrier, free out ni seller yan. At yung free out ay selling expense. If the agreement between the seller and the buyer is FOB shipping point, ang ibig sabihin, upon shipment of the seller of this good, the ownership or the title transfers to the buyer. Habang si carrier transport niya itong goods na ito sa location ni buyer, pag-aari na ni buyer yan. So, ang FOB shipping point, the buyer owns the goods. Since the buyer owns the goods, the buyer should be responsible for the free. So, book ngayon ni buyer, ang free na binayaran niya kay carrier ay magiging free int. Ang free int should be capitalized to the cost of the goods. Ina-add po natin yan sa ating purchases. Alright? Kasama yan sa cost ng goods natin. So, on December 20th, year 2, IKEA company purchase goods costing 1,500,000. So, pinurchase ni IKEA, buyer siya. Alright? FOB destination. Kapag FOB destination, pag-aari ni seller. Alright? With free charge of 45,000. Yung 45,000 sa books ni seller, magiging free out. Kasi nga, pag-aari niya yung goods in transit na yun. These goods were received on December 30, year 2. So, as of December 31, nasa kamay na ni buyer yon. So, kapag nasa kamay na ni buyer yon, kasama na yan sa kanyang inventory as of December 31st of year 2. So, isasama natin itong item number 1 na purchases. Amounting to 1,500,000. Item number two. On December 30, year two, IKEA company returned damaged goods to supplier costing 28,000. So purchase return ito. Anong ginagawa natin sa purchase return? Dinididak po natin yan sa ating inventory. Amounting to 28,000. Alright? Item number three. On December 25, year two, IKEA company sold to seller siya to customer AB costing 600,000 FOB destination and paid free charge of 33,000. Buyer received goods on January 
25th of year 3. So, December 25, si IKEA seller siya. Pag-aari pa rin niya yung goods na yun in transit. Dahil nga, ang usapan nilang dalawa is FOB destination. So, dahil pag-aari niya ang goods in transit na yun si IKEA, kasama yan sa kanyang inventory. Dahil hindi pa ito nare-receive ni customer AB na buyer natin. The 600,000 should be included in our inventory. Yung 33,000 hindi siya kasama sa ating inventory dahil yan po ay freed out which is a selling expense. Alright, item number 4. On January 6, year 3, IKEA company approved a sales return from customer AB with invoice price of 100,000. 30% profit on selling price. Ito, i-ignore lang natin. Bakit? Kasi as of December 31st, year 2, hindi pa nangyayari ito. Kasi January 6 nga po ito. Alright? So, wala tayong adjustment on item number 4. I-adjust na natin yan sa next year. Ang hinahanap natin ay yung inventory natin ng December 31st of year 2. So, ang answer natin is 2,072,000. And so, our answer is letter A. Alright, question number 6. The requirements on question number 6 is what amount should be included in inventory on December 31st? So, inventory ulit tayo dito. But most of this practice question is about a consignment. Alright? So, remember, on consignment, the consigner transfers the goods to the consign. The consigner owns the good while the consignee's responsibility is to sell the goods. Alright? Lahat po nang may incur niyang cost to bring this goods to the consignee like the free charges of the carrier, the insurance, Insurance, the handling cost, lahat po yan ay capitalize sa goods na kinonsign niya. Doon naman kay consignee, lahat po ng cost na may incur ni consignee with regards to selling these goods should be expensed by the consignor. Alright? So, Rocky Company had the following transactions during December. So, items number 1 to 5 tayo. Alright? Item number one, goods ship on consignment to Roger Company, including free charge of 45000 amounting to 345000 All right, ito yung goods kinonsigned ni Rocky Company kay Roger. So, si Rocky Company, consignor yan. Kailangan kasama yan sa kanyang inventory. Tapos, yung free charge na na incur ni consignor ni Rocky Company should be capitalized to the cost of the goods. Kailang kasama yan sa inventory or sa goods na kinonsign niya. At ang sabi, problem natin is including the free charge of 45,000. So yung buong 345, kasama na yung free doon. So, yung buong 345, kasama yan sa inventory natin ng December 31st. Item number 2, goods ship on consignment to checkpoint company. So, consignor ulit tayo dito. Si Rocky Company ay consignor ulit. Ang consignee this time is checkpoint company. Excluding, remember, excluding free charge of 67,000. So, remember, lahat po ng may incur ni consignor na cost in bringing these goods to the consignee kasama yon sa goods na kinonsign niya. Alright? So, yung itong 500,000 at ang free charge na 67,000 kailangan i-add natin. Alright? Ika-capitalize natin yung 67,000 na free charge. The total of the number 2 item is 567,000. That can kasama sa inventory natin. Sales made by Roger Company on goods consigned. So si Roger nakabenta siya ng, ng goods amounting to 400,000 na sales price. Sabi dito sa problem is 50% profit on sales. So 50% of the 400,000 ay profit natin. So ang ibig sabihin kapag ang profit which is based on your sales 
ang sales mo this time is 100. So, kung ano yung base mo, yun ang 100%. Therefore, kung sales minus the cost of the sales is equal to your gross profit, at ang gross profit mo ay 50, meaning ang cost of sales ratio mo is 50%. At ang kinukuha lang natin dito ay yung cost of the sales, okay? Cost ng inventory. Ang sabi dito is 400,000 is the sales price and the cost of the sales is 50%. Yun po ang inventory na nabenta niya. Since nabenta niya ito, palabas ang inventory natin, minus po ito sa ating inventory. Now, item number four, sales made by checkpoint company on goods consigned, 40% profit on cost. Magkaiba naman ito. This time, it's 40% profit on cost. So, ang cost mo ay 100%. Kasi base siya sa cost of sales. Ang gross profit is 40%. Which is based on your cost. Kung ano yung basis mo, yun ang 100%. Therefore, ang sales percentage natin is 140%. 140% minus 100% is equal to your gross profit of 40%, which is based of your 100%. So, ang kailangan lang natin is yung cost of sales. Alright? Yun ang minus natin sa ating inventory. So, item number 4 is 420,000 is your sales which represents 140%. Para makuha natin yung 100%, i-divide po natin. Alright? Yan po ang ating cost of sales no 100%, which is 300,000. Item number five, goods received on consignment from Becker company, including free prepaid by Becker, amounting to 800,000. So itong goods ni receive ni Rocky Company from Becker. So si Becker siya ang consignor, si Rocky siya ang consignee. So kapag consignee si Rocky Company, hindi dapat yan included sa kanyang inventory. So itong item number 5, hindi po siya included sa ating inventory. All right? Kasi si Rocky ay consignee. So, all in all, ang ating answer ay 412,000. So, our answer is letter B. Alright, number 7 naman tayo ngayon. So, theories naman tayo ngayon, alright? So, what is the meaning of the term FOB destinations free prepaid? So, before natin maiintindihan ang uh, choices from A to D, alamin muna natin kung ano ang concept dito, okay? So, there are two agreements between the seller and the buyer. So, it's either FOB destinations or FOB shipping point. Kapag FOB destinations, seller still owns the goods. For FOB shipping point naman is the buyer owns the goods in transit. There are two free payments na pwedeng maging agreement ng buyer at ng seller. Okay? Free prepaid at free collect. So free prepaid si seller binayaran na niya ang free bago pa umalis si carrier patungo kay kay buyer. So free collect naman pagdating carrier kay buyer kukolektahin niya. So sa free collect the buyer pays the free. Now on FOB destination free prepaid ang answer po natin dito ay letter C. All right? Ownership of goods purchase is transferred only upon receipt of the goods by the buyer at the point of destination and free charge is already paid by the seller free prepaid all right so our answer is letter c Alright, number 8 tayo. Parehas lang ito sa number 7. Ang questions ng number 8 is, what is the meaning of the term FOB shipping point and free collect? 
So gagamitin pa rin natin itong concept na ito sa pag-analyze sa mga choices. All right? And our answer is letter B. Ownership is transferred upon shipment of the goods and therefore the goods in transit are the property of the buyer and the common carrier shall collect the free charge on the goods shipped. So ang answer po natin dito ay letter B. Yung letter A po is FOB destinations freight collect. Yung letter C naman ay FOB destination freight prepay. At ang letter D nat ay FOB shipping point freight prepay. Alright? Alright, question number nine. The requirement on question number nine is what amount should be included in inventory on December 31st? So, ang hinahanap ng problem is yung ending inventory ng company on December 31st. Alright, so consignment ulit ang problem na ito. On September 4, year 1, every company consigned 1,000 jackets to Jason Company costing 800 pesos each. Consignor natin ay si Aubrey. At ang consignee natin ay si Jason. Alright, so Aubrey consigned 1,000 jackets to Jason and each jacket costing 800. So, magkano lahat yung transfer ni Aubrey or ng consignor kay consignee. So, we have 1,000 jackets. Then, we multiply that by the cost per jacket. Alright, so magkano lahat yung mga transfer niyang goods na 1,000 jackets. Ang cost ng mga jackets na yun ay 800,000. And paid 15,000 Freight. So, si Aubrey nagbayad siya ng 15,000 kay carrier to transport these goods to the consignee. So, yung freight na yun, we have capitalized that to the cost of the goods consigned. So, we add our freight of amounting to 15,000. So, we have a total cost of this 1,000 jacket. So, we have 815,000 cost. Alright. Ang tanong ng problem is kung magkano daw yung ending inventory ni Aubrey sa December 31st. And so, we have a total of 815,000. So, kung i-divide natin ito sa 1,000 jackets, then makukuha natin kung magkano ang cost per jacket natin. So, we will divide by 1,000 jackets. So, meron tayong cost per jacket na 815 per jacket. On December 30, year 1, Jason reported the sale of 750 jackets and remitted 900,000. The remittance was net of the agreed 20% commission. So, yung commission, expense na ni Aubriant, expense ng consignor. Ang tanong ng problem, hindi yung sales. Ang tanong ng problem is kung magkano pa yung naiiwan sa kanyang inventory. So, kung nakabenta si Jason ng 750 jackets, ang naiiwan na lang na jackets kay Jason or sa consignee is 215. So, kung bawat jacket ay 815, imamultiply lang natin ito sa 215 na jackets na naiiwan. Alright? So, magkano ang cost nung naiiwan na jacket? Ang cost niya is 203,750. And that is our answer. And our answer is letter A. Alright, question number 10, our last questions. The requirement is, what would be the adjusted inventory at December 31st, year 1? Mayan Corporations, a manufacturer of handbags, provided the following information from its accounting records for the year ended December 31st, year 1. So, we have inventory at December 31st of year 1 based on physical count of goods in Mayan's plant at cost on December 31st, year 1, amounting to 1,750,000. So, ano ba itong 1,750,000? Yan po yung mga merchandise on hand ni Maya Corporations. Alright? So, kasama yan sa hinahanap ng problem. Amounting to 1,750,000. 
this 1,750,000 is based on the physical count. Accounts payable at December 31st of year 1 amounting to 1,200,000. So itong accounts payable at net sales of 8,500,000, these two accounts are irrelevant sa hinahanap nating ending inventory ng December 31st. Walang effect ito sa ating inventory. So i-ignore lang natin po yun. So additional information as follow. Included in the physical count were handbags billed to a customer FOB shipping point on December 31st, year 1. These handbags had a cost of 28000 and were billed at 35000 The shipment was on Mayang loading dock at 5 o'clock p.m. on December 31st, year 1, waiting for to be picked up by the common carrier. Uh, so, ang nangyari dito is, so si carrier, hindi pa niya na pick up yung handbags na dapat ship ni seller ni Mayang sa buyer. Kahit na FOB shipping point ang usapan ng seller at buyer, kung hindi pa ito nakukuha ni carrier, hindi pa ito ship ni seller. So, ang ibig sabihin, nandun pa sa property ni seller yung mga inventories na yon dapat kasama pa rin sa kanyang inventory. Pero ang sabi ng problem, included in the physical count were handbags billed to a customer. So, included na po dito yon So, wala tayong adjustment sa additional information sa item number 1. Kasi dapat kasama yan sa physical count at isinaman na nga po yan sa physical count. Item number two, goods were in transit from a vendor to Maya. So si Maya ang buyer siya. On December 31st, year one, the invoice cost was 50000 and the goods were shipped. FOB shipping point on December 29. So, ang usapan nilang dalawa, si Mayang buyer siya, okay? So, ang usapan nila is FOB shipping point. So, kapag FOB shipping point, the buyer owns the goods. So, si Mayang buyer siya. So, kasama na yan sa kanyang inventory. Hindi yan kasama sa account. Siyempre, kasi nasa daan pa yun. Alright? So, itong number 2, isasama natin yan sa ating inventory. Alright, and the total just an inventory on December 31st, year 1, is 1,800,000. And our answer is letter D.